Hello, ladies and gentlemen, cyclocross fans and viewers from all around. Welcome to our coverage of the second stop of the 2023 USCX Series being held in Rochester, New York, in the beloved Genesee Valley Park. Grab some popcorn, throw your bike in the trainer, find some friends. The coverage starts now. Well, hello and welcome everybody. I'm Jeremy Powers, joined today by five-time national champion Ian Field. But this was last week down in Roanoke, Virginia at Virginia's Blue Cross. It was a seriously heated affair with several European riders all towing the start line. Our U.S. national champion, Curtis White, it was a true throwdown. Vincent Boston, the Belgian there, came through in fifth spot after having dominated the last several years in the preseason here in the U.S. But it was Louis Ruya, the rider there, in the green, taking the sprint against Andrew Strohmeyer and Anton Ferdinand, the Belgian. That was on Saturday at the Category 1. This was the more wet and greasy affair that came to the riders on Sunday when they woke up, rain, all of the Europeans feeling right at home as Ferdinand there kisses his front wheel. They were going backwards on the track, made for a really, really hard course, and the riders were ready for it. It was a big battle between Anton Ferdinand as well as Luis Ria. Vincent Bostons was able to do that, but at the end, big problems for the Belgian Anton Ferdinand and Luis Ria continues to dominate with two victories as he comes out of the Blue, Virginia Blue Cross. He's back today in Rochester as the, basically the leader of this USCX series. As you can tell, the series continues on in Baltimore at Charm City next weekend, and then finishes up up here in Massachusetts at the really rad Cyclocross Festival. As noted, I'm here with five-time British national champion Ian Field. Ian, welcome. Thanks very much for having me. Looking forward to this one today. Uh, some really exciting racing last weekend, I'm sure more in store this weekend on a slightly more technical uh, still super fast circuit see the today's weather 68 Fahrenheit around about 20 degrees Celsius 10 miles per hour coming from the northeast so it makes a small headwind on that start finish straight which could play out tactically as we uh, take a look across Rochester yeah no, uh, no spoilers, but we did see some great racing action over on the women's side. And if you're just joining us, definitely go back and watch that on demand on replay. It was a really great race. Ilabella, Ila Bella, or as her friends call her, Bella Holmgren, uh, out there, the junior women's world champion from Canada, going up against Magli Rochette, Caroline Mani, Sydney McGill. It was a great race. But here we go. We're going to see some start line images from the riders as they are all getting their tires checked and getting ready down uh, on the uh, on the start line. So, Ian, take us through what we're seeing here. We're taking you from GCN HQ in Bath in the UK all the way across to New York City and then up to Rochester where the race is this weekend. Here we go. We're going to be getting a bit of a map. Uh, Ian, you just saw it in the women's race. It's a beautiful track. Talk us a little bit through things. It really is. It's got uh, some very, very tight, twisty technical sections where the riders are really pushed with their skills and then some real open, fast sections so where they can lay down the power, put people under pressure both physically and technically. And it's got a little bit of everything. It's going to produce some great group, fast racing, perhaps in the men's race. And I'm sure it's going to come down to those final kind of two, three laps, perhaps. And people are going to have to show their cards eventually. But we're going to be hearing now from Magli, or excuse me, uh, Caroline Bonjour. Mani. This is Caroline Mani. We are here in Rochester, New York. This is the second round of the USCX series, and we're going to show you the course. This is a section called Double Trouble. It tells you how you can get in trouble. So that's going to be a technical section. We're going to go up that rocks and then back down on the other side. There we go. This is the young generation showing how it's done. I'm too old now. So we are on the other side of double trouble. The key is to go over that steep section and not end up in the water. 
This is pretty steep this year. It doesn't really matter which way you are going, up and down, it's gonna be a really steep technical section. You, you really wanna be leading the group because if anyone messed up at the top, then you're gonna have to get off the bike and lose a lot of time. So you're not gonna gain too much, but you could lose a lot of time here. This is a pretty technical section it doesn't look that hard but actually you want to slow down it's really loose in surface off camber i'm going to make sure i'm leading the course or at least like having a little bit of space because you get definitely lose your front wheels and then you have that really tight corner and then put the power down at the right time so pay attention to that don't do that Hey, at least she's doing it right in front of the bus. Watch the video from last year. That became viral. Because if it gets muddy here, you're going to have a lot of loss for sure. It's a really steep run up. This side of the course is going to be the powerful section. So if you watch the TV, you're going to probably see me with my tongue out. It's going to happen. And then the only break, it's not really a break, is those stairs are really painful and back to the finish line. Wish me luck. All right, and this is your start list for today. Vincent Bassans, the Belgian. Curtis White, our national champion. Louis Ruya, the Swiss rider there coming in. We've got quite a few different riders. Didn't get a great chance to run through that top 10, but Ruya Funston, Scott Funston starting his season out here, riding for the WTB Pivot Endurance Team. Anton Ferdinand, the Belgian, riding for Dussault Sens Moss. Michael Vanenham, Caleb Schwartz, Andrew Strohmeyer, Lance Heidet, Tyler Clark, Luke Valenti, Jules Van Kempen, Coach Scott, Teo Opezi, Sam Brown, Marcus Shelton are all rounding out that top 15. So quite a few riders are there. Now, today, we are going to be remembering Magnus White with a moment of silence here in Rochester Cyclocross. This was scheduled to be Magnus's first cyclocross race of the season, and the junior rider from Boulder, Colorado, was taken from the world when he was struck from behind by a car while out training uh, for this mountain bike world championships in July. Uh, I speak for everyone as a completely unfathomable loss for his family, friends, and for our community. Magnus had such an infectious smile and everyone that got a chance to be in his orbit was going to miss him greatly. Such a great guy. All right, Ian. We are down here on the start line and we are going to get this one kicked off. This is number eight, Andrew Strohmeyer riding for the CX Devo team, rocking the uh, rocking the big glasses and the white helmet here as we get uh, get things kicked off. Curtis White from the Steve Tilford Foundation had a good start to the season last weekend. Here's the Anton Ferdinand, definitely not from Canada, the Belgian stylish rider from last weekend, Vincent Bastans. A double winner last time out here last year. Uh, didn't quite have the weekend he wanted last weekend, but this man certainly did. Loris Roulier, uh, the Swiss man, took two wins. Here's Scott Funston. Wasn't there last weekend, but makes his cyclocross debut this season. One to watch. Here we have finally Michael Vandenham, the, uh, the Canadian front row start. And our front row rounded out by Caleb Schwartz. Had a good start last weekend, was uh, mixing it with that front group, and I'm sure he's going to be wanting to do the same this weekend. So the riders are ready down on the start line, um, ready to focus here now. Uh, like I said, they did that moment of silence for Magnus White. Everybody just waiting and getting ready now, though we've gone through the front. And I know Magnus wouldn't want it any other way, but for these riders to get down to business. As they take a look forward, we can see the look on Michael Vanenham. We see everybody just inching up on that front line, waiting for the whistle. 
They're off and running here on the C1 in Rochester, New York at the Rochester Cyclocross as they come down on the left-hand side. Andrew Strohmeyer lining this one out. Anton Ferdinand trying to get on point with him as they come through. It's Strohmeyer through first. Anton Ferdinand coming in. Boston's slotting in there in third spot, Ian. Really fast start there from Strohmeyer. He was uh, super strong last weekend. He took out the third place in the C1 on that opening day. Didn't finish the second day, but uh, look out for that man. Similar conditions to last Saturday, that C1 event where he really mixed it up with uh, Loris Roulier, Anton Ferdinand, etc. The Europeans coming across for those very precious UCI points. But uh, yeah, Strohmeyer really flew the flag for the USA last weekend and has gone out really hot on this one. Yeah, he definitely has. He's all in now, and these guys are not playing games. This is a Category 1 race, and we've got a crash here on the bridge already. Somebody clipped their bars there, so we've got mayhem now as we go through this. Ian, everybody getting shuffled back. Big domino effect, huge tons of riders. I don't know if that's going to be able to pass the, uh, the, 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 with the weight limit of that as everyone is stuck on that at the same time multiple riders with issues there kind of just one of those really unfortunate uh, things that can happen in cyclocross a mistake by one of the riders causes a huge problem for the whole group behind as they just pile in but uh, interesting Rulia goes to the front of this one already comes around Strobio as they enter that first technical section coming up it's all lined out behind yeah, yeah, for sure. And then Funston definitely with uh, with uh, something that he wants to put together for this year's season. I know that Funston's going to be out for blood last year. Um, really, really strong rider, working a lot for his teammate Eric Brunner. But now he wants to do he wants to do damage. He's very, very hungry. Had a chance to get to meet him last year. Came over here, but we get this replay. Let's see what happened. Oh, just before it, it looks like there was a big, a, a little bit of something that happened with the bars there, or maybe a roll tubular even in. Yeah, it looked like he just lost the front end, just kind of a bit of a strange crash, almost as he was exiting that left-hander into the bridge, went down, and that was fairly near the front of the race. As He's actually running down the other side of the bridge, so maybe you were right, maybe a roll tubular at that point just stopped that front wheel dead, and yeah, he went over the bars. Yeah, that's a, that's unfortunate. A lot of riders there. Yeah, I always say, you know, you won't... Uh, you will not win a single cross race in the first minute, but you definitely can lose it. And that, you'll lose a lot of time all at once when someone's going forward and you're just standing still with your bike kind of on your shoulder, unable to go anywhere. But we see Ben Frederick riding for the Small Monsters Project. If you're not familiar with that, check that out. He's up there in the top 10. We see, of course, Strohmeyer there just in front of everybody. Funston's up there. So we've got a lot of hitters making their way all through this. We see a lot of intensity, people really pushing the pace here to try to uh, get good footing here. Lance Hydette coming through there. Ferdinand shuffled back as well right now. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Ferdinand. That was off camera. He got a really good start. He was up there kind of third, fourth position. He's fallen way back. But you mentioned uh, Lance Hayden, another rider. First cyclocross uh, race of the season. He was fifth at National Champs last year. Eighth in the C1 here uh, last year. And uh, yeah, we'll be looking to uh, improve on those results. But here we see a shot of Ferdinand way back in the pack. Let's take a look here. We know uh, Michael Vanningham, former many times Canadian national champion there with Scott Funston. Uh, we saw also Curtis White there in that U.S. national champs kit coming through. Everybody now throwing down wants. This is, you can just tell by the speed right now, Ian. This is a hard first lap. This is right out of the block, super, super quick. It really is another problem there for Ferdinand off the bike and having to run that section. Didn't look like that was a planned thing. Just kind of maybe ran into the back of the rider ahead of him coming into this technical uh, little descent and back out. But a couple of li different lines being used by the riders. Rudier went far left, high left. Just tried to carry a little bit more corner speed than the riders riding that main line. Here we do see that rider who had problems earlier from the uh, CXD development team. Not quite sure, still can't quite make out what's actually 100% wrong with that bike, but obviously unrideable at this point. Roulier pushing things at the front and forcing a small couple of bike lengths to Bastans in second place. Up to the barriers, Roulier rides them, Bastans off. 
just getting a look here. You see Funston there also jumping the barricade, so got a mix. This is these barriers we were uh, described as being super, super tall, uh, up toward 40% surprise. You see Hydette not riding them. You see there on the right, that was Ben Frederick jumping over those barricades, so bringing out the skills to pay the bills for Freddy today as he comes through, but Lawrence Ria uh, already kind of with a little bit of a gap as he comes through here on the front, doing, doing what he did last weekend, and now White jumping across to this, not letting this gap extend. So right now, we've got a big battle on our hands with the Swiss Rider, and we've also got Strohmeyer tucked right onto his wheel as we get a replay here of this start. This is, again, little pea gravel as they come off. We see really fast start, and you can see this big aerial shot as they come through here, through the start finish. Then it was shuffled out immediately. One, uh, it, was, it was definitely a little bit argy-pargy as uh, channeling my good Marty McDonald as they came through here at the front. But uh, generally speaking, a clean start for so much horsepower. It was. It's uh, a pretty technical start straight into that left and then a long right hand and then down through the pits. So any problem, someone could get a change of bike. But interesting that uh, Rullier really Strohmeyer hopping those barriers and already off the back of that, they were able to force a gap back to uh, Bastans who got off to uh, interesting. Is that uh, Vanderham, someone riding those steps? Bastans once again just letting the wheel go after a kind of a feature of jumping back on. I think. You text me before we went live to say that Bastens had a crash on the road before the opening weekend of racing and bruised the bone. So it looks like he's having a slight problem kind of remounting the bike and getting back up to speed. I don't know if that is the problem, just kind of speculating, but that's two features now where we've seen where he's had to remount the bike. He's just struggling ever so slightly to hold the wheel as they're flying around this course. They're coming around to complete the opening lap already. Six and a half minutes of racing done. Yeah, no, super fast. Everybody doing a 629 here. I've got the got them pulled up here as they come through. So Curtis White technically through there first as he leads things up now coming in. Yeah, you can see that Strohmeyer doing everything that he can to just stay right in there, tucked in. Really great ride today from Michael Vanningham, the Canadian rider riding for Giant. Super great to see him up there riding so competitively. You were saying that this is, you know, if you're doing those uh, slower slopes and you're getting off your bike for those as well, you're off your bike three plus times a lap potentially on this track. So very, very fast course, lots of on and off the bike, but a, a great star studded field. You can see there's small fractures in the group already, but Vandenham on an awesome day right now, punching it back up with the US national champ, Curtis White, right on his wheel. Vandenham taking this one out hard. He was uh, ninth and an eighth last weekend, I'm sure. He wouldn't have been happy with that, and it looks like he's made a much better start this weekend, and he's going to just take full advantage. He's not going to wait for anyone. He's not going to play this one kind of tactically wait in the group. He knows that through a lot of these technical sections, it's best to lead, and he's not going to kind of leave it for a sprint down into one of these technical sections to lead. He's going to try and lead it out all the way, put the riders under pressure, make them double think about kind of coming to the front of this one. And uh, you see Ferdinand back in that chasing group. It'd be interesting to watch his progress up to that leading group. We see Vandenham going all in, only the second lap. He really wants to lead into this techno section. Curtis White checks his shoulder, really exactly the same as the first lap. He really wants to lead into this first technical section on the lap. Yeah, for sure. We see a lot of good talent here. There's Hydet looking back, trying to just, you know, first cycle cross race of the year. We can see there's Anton Ferdinand. It may be in the front. This is what Luis Ria and the other riders are looking to try to capitalize on. They know that one of the key top three riders in this field, and Anton Ferdinand, has been caught out. Something has happened. And now they're trying to really force the issue. Could make for a really fast first half. There's also a lot of Category 1 points on the line, as well as a big prize purse. Of course, the prestige of winning the Rochester Cyclocross. So there's a lot of things that are in play here right now. And there's a lot of mind games happening, a lot of mental things. But uh, at the end of the day, it's who can hang out of the pace. We know that the Europeans are really strong. They came over last weekend. And we can see that Loris Ruya is here on the front. But uh, Curtis White, everybody looks to be riding within control of themselves right now. There's Funston coming through, riding also looks to seem to be in control. Of course, Boston's having, uh, I think for the last four years running, literally been undefeated on this course. So he's got uh, an, an ax to grind, as the saying goes. Lots, lots happening here in Rochester in this elite men's race.
Yeah, and we're seeing that concertina effect through these technical sections, and then the real fast open sections in between, and then the riders, the leading rider gets out onto those fast open sections, punches it, gets up to speed. Meanwhile, at the back of the group, the rider's still in the technical section. So that concertina rubber band effect that we talk about in cyclocross all the time, we mentioned it in the women's race, we're seeing that play out right now, kind of Bastan's not even that far back in the group, but as soon as he exits these technical sections, he's just fighting, fighting back to the wheel ahead. And Rulier putting everyone under pressure there. Funston, small gap, small gap back to Bastans, another gap back to Schwartz. So, yeah, really interesting how this one's going to play out. It looks like Rulier's going to try and take this on fairly early and just make people burn matches just to come back to it. Interesting move there. We see uh, a little bit, uh, some riders, of course, most of the riders here at the front just getting off and riding it. But this is one of those sections that you're going to want to see later. If you make a mistake in one of these sections, that can be the race, right? It can be two, three bike lengths, boom, 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 all at once, and then you've got a gap and you're off and running, and that's your attack, is by putting someone under pressure. It's not necessarily coming from just punching it out of a turn or doing this, it's actually by bringing the pressure up, making it super, super hard, and then forcing an error and then giving a gap and trying to maintain that gap. But it'll be interesting to see, Ian, I'm not sure if your take on it so far, 10 minutes in already, so we're you know uh, a little bit into this one now. I wonder if you think this is gonna sit up or if you think that this is uh, someone kicked the bees nest over and we've just got a bunch of angry bees just running around here ready to froth at the mouth trying to sting stuff. I think potentially we're going to see it just continue to kick off with uh, Ferdinand distance. We saw Ferdinand was probably the second strongest out of the races last weekend. We see through the barriers and from the crowd, I presume there was a crash just yep, off camera. There, Curtis White's down. Not good. Not good for the national champion Curtis White. So that's it. That's gonna that's gonna change the mix of this top five that's coming through here. White, he he ran his bike, so it had to have been getting back on. There had to have been an issue there, as we see again Strohmeyer riding so strong. And now we uh, we had uh, last weekend already Lars Ria seeing that there was a uh, a real rider, a real intensity in Andrew Strohmeyer, and a, a desire to not drop the pace. So a lot going on there, and now that these riders have studied each other a little bit, they know a little bit more uh, about each other, and they're going to not be playing games. So I think right now, Lars Ruya, Vincent Bastans, especially with Anton Ferdinand distance, this is going to look like a race between uh, potentially Vandenham, Strohmeyer, Funston, Caleb Schwartz maybe even mixing in there just at the back. So we've got definitely some riders, but Curtis White seems to have dropped, uh, dropped some time here, uh, either with a mechanical error or a crash remounting his bike. I was just trying to check back, look down at the bottom of the screen to see the riders coming through at the bottom there in that chasing group, and I did not see the stars and stripes of the American champion, Curtis White. So, yeah, maybe a fundamental problem with the bike after that uh, problem after the barriers, but now already down to a group of four at the front of this one. And just as I was saying before, Curtis White had that problem. Anton Ferdinand probably looked the second strongest last weekend, just a mistake on the final lap of the C2 on Sunday cost him that second place he ended up third so i'd have thought really i would be looking around checking out who's in that leading group and uh, assessing how he's going to ride the rest of this race from that we might see a sitting up right now because it is a slight headwind down the start finish straight interesting to see if uh, loris looks around and flicks the elbow see if uh, stromeyer is going to come through here we see flicks that elbow moves over to the left hand side of the track for him forces stromeyer funston through but Interesting enough, doesn't want to drop last wheel, doesn't want to drop in behind Vincent Bastons. He wants to maintain a decent position because those technical sections, it's just concertinering out after each of those sections, and he doesn't want to be fourth wheel, doesn't want to make more of an effort to hold the wheel ahead and, or even have to come back to it after them. Getting a report that uh, White tripped, getting back on as he ran through the barricades, and uh, that's the reason for the mechanical and the problem now as Funston opens up a gap. Rie needing to uh, respond to this move from Sat Funston, the rider already last year uh, showing how strong he was. The young rider, 24 years old, uh, from the U.S., WTB Pivot Endurance, uh, coming through here, opening about a three, four bikes lengths already over, like I said last year. I was able to have him over here for a campfire here at the when they were in town for the Northampton cyclocross races. I got to know him a little bit through that, talking with him, very hungry, very, uh, a rider that really wants to prove himself on the circuit. This is his first race of the season. Looks like the off season has gone well. 
he's out here today putting down attacks against our last weekend's double winner, uh, Loris Ria. Or, as you say, Ria. Jez Cox convinced me that it was Ria from an interview. You're saying Rulie. I don't know. Let's. Uh, but we need to decide on this. Now. We need to decide on this. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. Strohmeyer leading as well. <laughs> is it All not? Right. I will take you for that. It is, in fact, <laughs> Strohmeyer that is leading. Thank you very much. And it's Funston that's just back there in fourth spot. So thank you for that. So we've got two two bones to pick now. Uh, but uh, it is no doubt that Strohmeyer back. It's not a fluke. It's not a mistake. But there is our national champion just tucked into that second group, Curtis White. So yes, a crash, but able to have recovered from that. So we're getting it all, uh, all right and wrong at the same time. But right now, man. This is a great ride from Strohmeyer. He's really come off this season, uh, putting it together. Funston just trampled off just a couple of bike lengths now, but uh, Andrew Strohmeyer drilling it again. And uh, now we're seeing it all come back together. So Will Strohmeyer continuing to extend and continue to attack this front group uh, only 15 minutes in. Interesting to see who's leading that chasing group already. Anton Ferdinand made his way through to that lead of that chasing group. See a couple of different line choices through that uh, cambered section, that high line, low line um, combo. Different riders choosing uh, different lines, but yeah, Stromar looking really strong. Bass stands doing a good ride as well. Funston makes it back onto that group of interesting as it kind of accelerates away from this technical section whether he can hold the wheel looks like curtis white has gathered himself sorted himself out and he's got a good wheel to follow now to try and break clear of this uh, chasing group try and jump across as quickly as possible to that leading four yeah there's a lot of horsepower in this group and the truth is is that um you know, White's lap there was only five, seven seconds slower than the front group. So he did have a problem, didn't lose as much time as we had feared. And um, yeah, you, would, you don't want to give away 10 seconds, but you know, it's such a fast course that I would be surprised if there isn't an opportunity to come back from it, but uh, it's not going to be without having to burn a match or two. So let's see what White can do. He definitely has to make up for that error that he had. Um, but this is what happens when you're, you know, at the front of a really big race like this. The pressure in Rochester, Ian, always high. It is. It is this C1, uh, as I said, in the women's race. This is the only C1 in the world this weekend. So uh, if you wanted to win that big 80 UCI points for winning this event, you had to come to Rochester, New York to do so. Um, and all these riders know how precious we see Funston there just getting distance once again, coming out of those technical sections, just unable to really hold the wheel as close as he would want to. And yeah, he's burning a lot of matches early in this race, only 17 minutes in and just constantly trying to have to come back to that wheel ahead and hold that leading group for as long as possible. It's always so difficult that first race of the year, especially when other riders have got a few races under the belt. For instance, Rulier, really four races already this season, three wins as we see. Great technique, hands on the top of those bars, hopping through them. In fact, the leading four all hopping those barriers. Yeah, you can see uh, Funston, Ferdinand, Rulier, all 24 years old. Uh, so interesting little tidbit there. Schwartz, 25 years old. Vandenham, 32. White, 29. Vincent Bostons. 35 years old so your top uh, six seven riders right now definitely a bunch of different ages lots of different uh, experience all coming into play but uh, these three riders last weekend definitely on the Saturday at the at the C1 got to know each other pretty well Boston's though I think after having it warmed up a bit seems like he's doing fine um, riding super strong and he obviously likes this track because he's uh, yeah there hasn't been anyone else that's won here since uh, since he's been taking place for some time um, even having personally raced against him here. I know he's very good on this track. He likes it a lot. He's very, very strong. Absolutely. For, for anyone that doesn't know Vincent Bastans, he's an under-23 Belgian champion in 2009. Uh, he's had a sick foot to World Cup last year in Val de Soleil. So, uh, yeah, we're talking about a serious, serious bike rider. He grew up, uh, I think he's from the same town as the great Sven Nace, Baal, and uh, was taken under his wing. Uh, but looking... Just losing a small gap on those steps. Just uh, doesn't look quite as comfortable on that running section. Whether that is issues from that crash, like we mentioned earlier, uh, bruised bone from crashing on the road. So we see Curtis White riding the steps there and trying to force things from that group behind, desperate to get back to the front of this bike race. 
I am right that the last two additions, uh, Boston has won. So four in a row for him. Trying to make it five today. Five in a row for Vincent Boston, but it is uh, Roulier that's now coming to the front here and opening up one or two bike lanes. Like you said, over those blue steps, Strohmeyer's going to need to watch out. He's, he's probably not familiar with the fact that uh, Boston's, but this is this is the young rider, Andrew Strohmeyer, now not letting that gap open up, needing to pull Vincent Boston's along with him to be able to get across to this. And uh, Strohmeyer's not going to take no for an answer today. He's got that confidence. He's got the form clearly, and he's not going to let a gap open up. No, absolutely not. And uh, he did the right thing there. It would have been really easy to sit in the wheel and kind of hope that Bastan's closed it down. But it looked like Bastan's wasn't able to and still hasn't quite made it across that gap. But Stromeyer jumped across really quickly. That's what you've got to do in those situations. It was interesting. I was reading a, an article midweek done by the CX Hairs, um, an interview with Stromeyer talking about how he'd grown up racing the likes of Magnus, Sheffield, etc. Has always been kind of a smaller statured rider. And it's just taken him a little while to kind of catch up physically, as it were. And, wow, just really showing how strong he is these opening weekends of the CX season. Yeah, you know, I always remember watching the younger riders come through the under 23s and you get these flashes, these, 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 you know, glimpses of what's what's to come. And, um, you know, they put it together for 15, 30, 45 minutes and then, you know, they fall apart in the last two laps. But it's the, it's the race inside the race. You don't know the full story, but they're doing much better and they're progressing through the ranks. It's finally, you know, 24 years old, we're seeing um, finally uh, Strohmeyer, excuse me, 22 years old for Andrew Strohmeyer putting it all together here and just really showing his strength and now white back to the front punching it trying to come across ferdinand also taking notice schwartz van in hand high debt this this group of chasers is like the who's who it's a hitter city out here in the second group right now bunston taken back into that chasing group so he's been swallowed up now he was gradually tailed off that uh, leading group of three and now he's you know, been brought back into that chase group and it's curtis white and anton ferdinand desperately trying to work together to try and bring this one back but curtis white opening up a small gap over ferdinand and it's really a course where it's very very difficult to work together even even as a duo let alone a small group because of these very slow technical parts where you kind of run into the back of the rider ahead of you and then when they sprint away from it you're just kind of playing catch up as it were and Basta still hasn't quite made it back onto the wheel as such and so very 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 difficult to uh, work together and close down this very fast leading group it's going to going to take this leading group to completely stall and look round at each other to, to see if anyone wants to take it on for that chasing group to come back. Yeah, watching the group here. White definitely has made an impact with that move across. He's got the legs. You know, What do you think, Ian? Can you make one mistake on a course like this and still make it back? It depends a little on the other riders, but he's got to get across quickly because it's one of those efforts where you're going really into the red. You're going deep. Uh, you've got to get across within the lap, otherwise you just end up stalling and, yeah, perhaps sitting up ever so slightly and being engulfed back into that chasing group. And then kind of when you're in a group like that, you end up racing the riders around you rather than kind of all working together to get that leading uh, trio back. So he's got to make it across in the next probably half a lap, maybe lap completely. Otherwise, yeah, I can't see him getting across. All right, Ian, I've had someone, Peter Dobos, has reached out to me and has given me a uh, a very serious translation. So, the Swiss rider. Ru ruler, as we would say. But that would be how we pronounce it in English. It is to rust, apparently, is the exact translation. And it ends with a long A sound, not a short one. So, I'm going to go with rulia. Rulia. Is that how you've been saying it? Rulia? <laughs> We'll go with Laurie. We're going to go with it. Rulier off the front right now, pushing the pace. 624 uh, was his last lap time. 625 on his second lap. 629 on his first lap for Loris Rulier. Right now, he's got uh, Vincent Bastans uh, as the uh, rider that was just on his tail. But right now, it's the young 22 rider, the under 23 national champion. Andrew Strohmeyer that's leading this one out and looking to take his first uh, C1 victory against the European riders this season. So right now, Andrew Strohmeyer putting together a career ride. 
Man, it's awesome to see how strong he is in this top three. He's tucking away our U.S. national champion, Curtis White, leading the chase group, getting across these barriers, which gave him so much trouble last time, trying to make his way across Anton Ferdinand, the strong Belgian there, tucked into that uh, second group as well as we get this beautiful aerial shot of these three riders working together as they make their way onto the top half of this swoopy section here in Rochester, New York at the Rochester Cyclocross here in Genesee Valley Park. See Strohmeyer there looking across. This is a good moment on the course where it kind of twists around back on itself. You can get a real good idea of what's going on in that chasing group, kind of engage the gap each lap, can gauge who's working on the front of that group, how big that group is, etc. So get a good real understanding, not, not only every time you go through the pits, obviously uh, your mechanics can shout information up, but it's very, very brief and so can use little sections of the course like that to get a real good understanding of what's going on behind and and how you can play it in terms of leading this leading group whether you need to keep applying the pressure to keep that chase group behind or you can start to play a few games perhaps with this trio to try and win this one as they're coming round already to complete yet another lap i can't believe the speed these three guys are lapping in this area right here that they just went over, having raced this part and been going over these blue stairs and doing this section at this point in the race, it's really, really hard to get the bike back up to speed. It's on an uphill. You're off the bike on kind of slow and like thicker grass. You put the bike down, it's slow, like gently rising uphill, so you don't get any momentum. So it's kind of like you're jumping onto almost a rock. Your bike's like kind of stuck but then you've got to be in an easy gear and you've got to just punch it back up to speed and you've got to find your pedals and you've got to go around a turn all at the same time. Look for this to continue to play out as these laps go on as we now we see Rulia there going through taking a gel as he comes through the start finish. So 26 minutes in, taking a gel. Now we see Vandenham there um, coming through. So there's a little bit of a gap. It's got to be right around I would say for this group, it's, uh, let's look here, 19 seconds exactly as they come through. So 19 seconds to the front for Ferdinand White, Funston, Vandenham, High Debt. You can already see that kind of second group mentality kicking in a little bit. No one really wanting to take over from Vandenham through that start finish straight, slight headwind. Nobody really wanted to take it on. They're all waiting for that next technical section to try and hit it as hard as possible and break away from that group rather than work together as such. But yeah, Bastans looks like he's just struggling ever so slightly to hold the wheel. He probably best to try and move up a position but that's the last thing you want to hear as a rider if you're struggling to hold third wheel is uh, going through the pitch and mechanics shouting move up they'll be doing everything they can to just stay on as now van and ham brings the pace back up to try to limit the damage as these front riders are working really well together but we're getting a bit of a replay here it looks like uh of just what was happening here as boston's Lars coming to the front, then Strohmeyer going around that little bit of mud there that's in the pits as we see Bassans just taking a look over his shoulder to be able to get a sense of uh, how things are uh, how things are progressing in the chase. So he's feeling comfortable, but we know Vincent Bassans has a lot of experience on this track. It just said that he's won the last two years back to back to back to back. So four editions have been won by Vincent Bassans. He comes up against pretty stiff competition, but he's also had an injury while out training um, during the first week down in Virginia. Hit uh, a bit of a bone bruise, and um, we know that he knows how to just count his uh, efforts, manage his effort, and wait for the right time to pounce. But he could be up against two stronger men today. We will have to see. Look at him really digging deep just to hold on. He knows how important it is just to get dragged away by what seems two stronger riders right now in this race, just holding on for dear life to be dragged away from that big chasing group because he knows if he can make it to 40, 45 minutes then the gap behind will be enough for him to hang on to that podium spot. But uh, Lois Roulier really forcing things through these technical sections and making everyone a house with Strohmeyer just holding that wheel, holding uh, the heels of uh, Roulier through that section really, really well. I mean, when we talk of a rider like Loris Roulier, 
four races, three wins this season. Like I said, he was a European junior champion in 2017. He's a three-time Swiss champion, twice as a junior, once as an under-23. He's won a World Cup as a junior. He was one of the big, big names coming through. And he's just kind of stagnated the last couple of years, uh, slightly kind of moved down in terms of kind of teams maybe team status perhaps he was on the on the Corandon team back in the day kind of Matthew van der Poel's CX team it's moved down now to perhaps kind of a smaller statured on paper team but he looks like he's going better than ever well that section looks to be aced by Strohmeyer gap to Loris Rullier so now we've got big problems here for both those riders as they come through getting a little bit of a check I mean that's when you're a top rider, you bring a certain swagger to the way that you come to these sections, and you don't expect to be upstaged. But in this case, Strohmeyer looked to me to have ridden that ace to clean without putting a foot down. It seemed as though it was Bastons and Roulier that were also having problems with it. Two bike lengths coming out of that section. This, in my opinion, is where this race is going to happen. Uh, here and at those blue stairs is where I think we're going to have one less. But you can see that Roulier was able to make it back across over to Andrew Strohmeyer, but Boston's having to do a lot of work to come back from that again. I think it's quite telling how uh, how quickly Roulier made it back to the wheel there, and it's still got Bastan struggling to come back. Loris Roulier just getting a little bit squirrely over that first one, just kind of looked like he was pulling up on the right-hand side of the bar, slightly harder than the left, and the bike got a little bit sideways over the first one, but able to correct it for that second barrier. Curtis White just opening up once again over that uh, chasing group. He dismounts, goes up bike. This is where he had that problem earlier in the race. Vandenham, Ferdinand, Lars Haydet just has <laughs> stumbled. We spoke about how tall these are. Not only causing problems for riders trying to uh, bunny hop them, but riders kind of misjudging it ever so slightly and catching their toes on the top of the barriers and can be really nasty when you do that, falling kind of with the bike in your hands. And yeah, never nice when that happens. Yeah, lower tire pressure, under pressure. Um, handful of things that made me think on that uh, on that barrier there where we see it go a little sideways is like, this is a little bit of the train off the tracks. Like guys are, we're out there just <laughs> throwing lefts and rights, hoping one of them lands right now. Yeah, talking to tire pressures, uh, Roulier running 1.5. 1.45 bar so uh, not super super low uh, there are kind of rocks and roots during these technical sections which could cause pinch punches so riders perhaps going slightly harder for these for this course today than perhaps what they normally would Vandenham running around 25 psi so similar kind of ballpark um, so yeah kind of looking for that lesser rolling resistance we're going a little bit harder um, but also Compensating for those rocks and roots in the woods, not wanting to pinch punch on those either. I'm going to be curious to see if this sits up or if someone drives it through this start finish. That's going to tell me where these guys are. This is the halfway point, Ian, and um, you know as well as I do, this is always a time when you're like, all right, there's still quite a bit to go. Uh, do they sit up or do they keep going? It looks like they're going to sit up. <laughs> really, it just backs off ever so slightly, but Strohmeyer takes his gel, so a lap later. Interesting that so many riders now choosing to take a gel. Um, we do know that it's a good kind of backed up research behind the fact if you swill sugars around your mouth that uh, the body gets ready, releases a bit more energy, lets you go a little bit deeper, etc., rather than... Uh, actually get to the stomach, digesting it, and, and using it as a fuel that way. So it can be a little trick, perhaps, that these riders are using. But also, perhaps, in these hot conditions, or maybe an isotonic gel as well, just trying to help with the salts, etc. Not too many riders with bottles on the bikes, not choosing to drink this weekend, as we saw last weekend. But, yeah, get a good idea on that section, this chasing group, looking longingly across to that leading trio as they go through the pits once again. Yeah, 4.30 in the afternoon here in uh, the east coast of the United States as these riders are racing in the northwest uh, part of the New York State. Uh, quite a ways away from New York City. Uh, it would be a long drive if you were coming up, but uh, the temperature will have cooled at this point in the day. So these riders probably having even you know more seasonable and 
cooler weather than say the uh, the women's race. The women's race will will definitely have uh, have been uh, a little bit different as they go through. So yeah, the men here are are all out doing what they can, but the temperature is uh, is going to be quite seasonable for them. But yeah, if you are curious, uh, carbohydrate rinse. Lots of studies have been uh, have been done on this, and there's uh, there is a, there is a, an effect. You know, you get a little bit of energy. Your body doesn't think that it's starving itself and it'll let you continue on. So lots of good uh, research coming out of that, even back when I was racing. And uh, I have to say, it does it does make a difference. But uh, right now, we've got all these riders at the front here, and we've got a serious chase group. I'm going to run you through your top 10. Loris Ruye. We've got Vincent Bastans, uh, Andrew Strohmeyer in the top three. Curtis White, our U.S. national champion. Anton Ferdinand, the Belgian, riding for Deshaun Hens Moss. Michael Vanningham, Lance Heidet, Scott Funston, Jules Van Kempen, Caleb Schwartz. Luke Valenti are all making up that group with Ian Acker just hanging out there in Marcus Shelton. So that is uh, that is kind of that chase group there um, of the top. I'd say that through Shelton, that's the top 13 right now. So we've got quite a few riders really uh, working close, very fast group style racing here in Rochester this year. You know, only separating that big chase group by about 20 seconds right now from these front runners. If these guys continue to sit up and take a little bit, uh, you know, the one lap a little more gingerly, guys like White, Ferdinand, Funston are all going to be right there nipping at their heels. Only 20 seconds or so back to that chasing group. These these leading three can't play around too much and let that chasing group back in because a number of riders, kind of seven, eight riders in that chasing group. But uh, back out now onto this fast bike path section that the riders really get up to speed and one of the sections where you can really kind of get an effect of drafting the rider ahead of see Ferdinand leading that one out from Curtis White, Van Ham in there as well, Funston, Lance Haydet kind of bringing up the rear, desperately hanging on as you see Bastas still not able just to fully close down that gap even on that fast section as you see that chasing group now always seems no, the last also... rider, last rider of the group always struggling the most to hold the wheel. This part you don't want to be on the back for. This is this is where you, you can see that he's willing to take that risk to be right up in the rear cassette there. A, you know, uh, Boston's right up on Strohmeyer's rear tire there. He doesn't want to lose the gap again because it's, it's, it's starting to really eat into him, you can tell. And they're looking back. They know they're doing damage. You don't want to go into the last lap with Vincent Boston's on your wheel here. If you're thinking about it in your mind, you're like, all right, so we got a guy. He's really good. He's Belgian. He, you know, from 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 the heartland of it you know, he's won the last four editions of this and uh he's still with us and we're 37 minutes into the race <laughs> for sure and i always talk about riders kind of almost in two categories of riders obviously they're all very very strong and then you have a few of them that are real race winners they just know how to win a bike race vincent bastance is one of those whether his legs can do the talking or not today it doesn't look like he's uh, the strongest out of this group but yeah never write off a man like vincent bastance no never would never would haven't raced against him a lot he's a uh, he's a finisher too he, if he he'll sit there and suffer but uh you know, at the end of the race, he can do something. I don't know, like you said, if he's going to have the legs today, but he definitely is a strong rider. As we see now, Michael Vanningham coming through there with uh, Curtis White just on his rear wheel as they come up to the barricades. And it looks like these guys are, I'll say, messing about a little bit here now at the front. Uh, Ruye, uh, as well as Funston, maybe feeling the effects of those last really, really intense and hard laps. This is the point in the race where it really begins to hurt. I always said, like, anyone can go fast for 20 minutes, and then around the 40, 45 minute mark, that's when it really, really begins to hurt. That's when you start making mistakes if you're on the limit. Uh, so just watch these guys through the technical sections. We get a replay now through these tight turns. Just here you see Rudier not wanting to take it on, just pulling into the right hand side and strove by a fair play to him. He's willing to take it on, go to the front of this bike race. He's uh, not scared by names. Let's see how these guys get up and over these blue stairs as they come in here. Uh, three laps to go when they come through. It'll be two to go, or two, or excuse me, three full laps to go when they come through. So this will will have uh, lap seven, eight, and nine to go. So still got another good 20-ish minutes of racing left through that without any real intensity everybody able to get through that without a lot of uh, a lot of problems as they come through that bull section 
I don't think that anybody from the chase group, unless there's a massive sit-up, is going to be able to make it back. It's just on a track like this, you have to ask yourself, you know, where could I find five seconds um, and do it back to back? There's just not enough time left, in my opinion, Ian, for the chase group to be able to, even if they did get across, then be able to finish it off with the riders that are in the front right now and the pedigree that they have. I think these front three know that they're the strongest in the bike race at, at this point in time. So it's one of those situations you're, you're racing the two other guys. You're, you're looking around, you're making sure the gap isn't coming down to kind of four or five seconds where someone could launch across from that chasing group because it's very difficult to manage. Right now, a group of three, fairly easy to manage. If, if you're in third place, a, a, a big acceleration can take you to the front of the bike race. It yeah, isn't too difficult to manage, but if you let this group back into it, suddenly it can come a bit more of a lottery, get jumped into one of those technical sections in the final kind of two laps, and, and a gap can go coming out of it, and it's race done even if you had the legs to win it. So super important now to uh, maintain position within the group and keep that gap for those front three they're working fairly well together 25 26 seconds and for the first time we see vincent bastans come to the front whether he's going to force the pace or whether he's going to slow this one down he's been the one kind of swinging at the back but right now looks like he's uh, pressing on not sitting up not taking advantage not trying to take a recovery and behind vandenham still presses on curtis white funston yeah it's interesting, the lap times, uh, 633, 634 for the front three, and 638 and 637 for the chase group. So yeah, only three, four, five seconds maximum there as we see a little bit of uh, everybody going through, just getting around that mud pit there from the, uh, looks to be from the pit zone where they were probably getting some bikes cleaned up, a little bit of water runoff. It's the only, the only standing water that's on the track as they come up to this really steep part here now. Um, these three riders off the front. You can see Strohmeyer just using this really wide turn, carrying all his momentum. Boston's having to give one or two bike lengths. So up that climb there, Strohmeyer now realizing he had said last weekend down at Go Cross, Ian, that he didn't like sitting around. He thought that the guys were uh, not racing 110%, and uh, he wanted to keep the pace high. It may be another case of that where Strohmeyer's just getting the itch, and um, he's going to win a lot of hearts like that. He's definitely got... Uh, Rouillet right now in a really bad position, stuck behind Bostons, and I'm seeing a big, a bit of a gap now opening up here yet. I think Strohmeyer felt that the pace was dropping with Bastans on the front, and so jumped around him just ahead of that technical section, and uh, Rouillet playing a bit of a funny game right now, just sitting behind. He had an opportunity to jump around Bastans, but where he's just trying to use him for as long as possible, and then he's just going to jump across on that next power section, get rid of the Belgian rider, but right now that gap is definitely opening up to Andrew Strohmeyer through this technical section. Fast beat up here, Bastans in second, Roulier in third. Interesting oh. to see as soon as we get to the next fast section, will Loris Roulier jump Bastans? This is bad news for Roulier. This could be a bad moment for the Swiss rider that's been so dominant down uh, in Virginia's Blue Cross. But now today, Boston's there, gets in between them. After you see Strohmeyer go up on that 180 hill climb there, Strohmeyer launches a move that wasn't a blatant attack, but it was going hard through the turn, opened up one or two bike lengths, then through that left, right, back and forth, up and down section. Now Roulier has to jump over the top of Boston's. Maybe this is what Roulier's idea was, to take Boston's, follow him, and then jump across knowing that he wouldn't be able to make that gap but right now it looks as though Rouye rides that section cleanly Boston's now having to suffer a ton to be able to stick it on the Swiss Riders reel but it's going to be up to right now Andrew Strohmeyer can he continue to put this one together can he come through that technical section and punch it back up and solidify this gap over Loris Rouye or is Rouye just toying and pawing with them right now yeah, this is the key moment of the race, whether Roulier can get back to the wheel of Strohmeyer. If he does, that is a huge play from Loris Roulier. Just absolutely using Vincent Bastans for as long as possible, remaining in the wheel and then just jumping him to kind of get rid of him from that leading group and jumping across to Strohmeyer. That will show huge confidence in his ability in his legs today if he does manage to get back to Andrew Strohmeyer before the end of this lap. You see that chasing group now just all lined out everyone just fighting 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 for the wheel ahead and yep loris really is back to the wheel i think that goes to show how strong he is today
Yeah, he's strong, but this is the moment now where Strohmeyer needs to take a look at this and focus. If he realizes that he had the gap and the effort that Lars had to do to come back to him, this is another moment to continue to go. You double down on this effort right now. This could be a race-winning move for Andrew Strohmeyer if he has it in the tank to be able to attack Lars Rie right now as they come through. Or is Rie going to go over the top and try to distance this whole thing and put this one in the can straight away? Time will tell. But now we see the uh, American champion, Curtis White, now opening 3-4 bike lengths over Michael Vandenham. Lance Idet, we heard another crash there potentially as we came through with a bit of a yell from the crowd. So Vincent Boston's there, did everything that he could, Ian, to hang on. But it was uh, a clever move from the Swiss rider to uh, wait and then jump across to Andrew Strohmeyer. I think perhaps Bastan's is just racing for that third place. That's why he went to the front. He felt as though the pace was dropping. Uh, Strohmeyer was looking to Rulio. Rulio was looking to Strohmeyer. And Bastan's realized that they were slowing down and he definitely doesn't want to get caught up in that chasing group because potentially that third place is under pressure. Um, it looks like he stabilized things ever so slightly with that, with that gap. But... Uh, yeah, Rulier looking right now like he's got everything under control. It's going to be interesting to see what happens now across the course of this uh, penultimate lap. They're coming around now to complete this lap, so it'll be two laps to go when they cross the line. It's like Bastard just fighting, fighting, fighting. He just will not give up. No, he will not. He's like a, a tuna off the side of the boat right now. What if you were teammate, coach, friend to Strohmeyer, what would you be giving him as advice? Well, he's in a, a tricky situation. Uh, it's one of those. He did get the gap, but I don't think he kind of legitimately got the gap over Roulier, uh, the way he closed down that gap. So I would tell him to try and kind of get Roulier to come through to the front, try and use him. But yeah, Roulier's uh, playing a game right now. He's not coming to the front of this bike race until he wants to win it. Ah, the old uh, the old bike racing tactics are in play. You can see Strohmeyer frustrated there as he gives him a big swipe of the arm. Pull through. Come on. I did this work, but the uh, Swiss riders realizing, no, no, I actually had to go super deep to uh, to try to get rid of Vincent Bastans, and now uh, and now this is what's happening. Curtis White making a big effort here, and if we look down at the lap times, White there did the same times lap as the uh, other riders. So 624 there, which is about the fastest lap of the day for any rider. So White making a huge effort, as might be timed just perfectly, as both Strohmeyer's frustrated, Rouillet's done an effort, Boston's is tapped. I would not be surprised if we see lap eight uh, of this race go a little bit slower with all of those guys punching it out. And now with Curtis White coming across only at about 20 seconds by my calculations, this could get interesting if Curtis White were able to reemerge and come across to this group surprisingly. It looks like White had the legs today. I just saw him earlier in the race. If you missed that one, he had a problem over the barriers one lap. It looked like perhaps a, a chain was off after falling, after tripping over the barriers. And uh, yeah, kind of got reabsorbed by the chasing group. And a real lull in the action now. Strohmeyer eventually gets, gets off the front, forces Rulier to the front, but not really the place on the course where you perhaps want to give up that leading position as there. Yeah, we, there we see uh, a real battle now back for first position. This is a technical section coming up and all the riders in this leading group know how important it is to lead through these technical sections. You can force a little gap, force your opponent into a kind of a stake through these sections. This could be a position where you can win this bike race. Strohmeyer showed his cards in that last lap a little bit uh, with what's possible. Um, now we see here just a small gap now with uh, Loris Rouillet coming through there, just giving a bit of a bit of a maybe a little warning shot on that section. That's it's not particularly technical from where we're seeing the riders up into that other spot. It's just a small little uphill underneath the bridge. We miss it for a second, but you can see now there is a grimace on uh, Loris Rouillet's face there as he comes through. Strohmeyer looks to well be in control, but Boston's there throwing a lot of coal on the fire to do everything that he can to stick on despite all the tactics, all the big efforts, punching and doing everything they can to get rid of the Belgian. He's still stuck on, and truthfully, they've tried to get rid of each other, and they haven't been able to break this up. So we've got a real bike race on our hands with about 15 minutes left here with uh, the young Andrew Strohmeyer coming through. Loris Rie, they're on the front, and Bastant's now right up in the rear cluster there of uh, Andrew Strohmeyer. This lap, I think, is going to go slower, and we've got the U.S. national champ, Curtis White, coming across as well. 
Fast outs just letting <laughs> Strohmeyer know that he's still there on that run up, forcing his way up the inside. Yeah, that section where Roulier kind of gained that little gap up under that flyover and just go up onto a man made bridge. And then it's an uphill kind of cambered section all the way around to the left. It's easy to lose traction, but Strohmeyer just needs to be patient. It, I feel like he's getting played a little bit at this point in the race by Roulier, just forcing him back onto the front on one of these fast sections. Just needs to sit back, be patient, and uh, force things through these technical sections. He's looked really, really good technically. He just needs to force things and keep Roulier on the back foot, make him keep chasing back, keep chasing back. It's very difficult when you're up against someone as strong as Loris Roulier. But uh, I think that's how I'd play it as, uh, as Strohmeyer, just force it through those techni technical sections. We see Curtis White, clean double trouble, looking really strong. And unfortunate to have that problem earlier in the race because, yeah, he's got the lap times. He perhaps should have been in that leading group. And, uh, yeah, right now some uh, gesticulations between those leading trio. Uh, lots of waving and arms and, yeah trying to force opponent onto the front on these open sections where that wind has picked up through the day and the forecast is said to be only around 10 miles per hour but looks like it's picked up a little bit more since since that forecast since that earlier time in the day so definitely advantages on certain sections of this course from being behind but back round now to the barriers once again wow Everybody over the barricades clean there through that in that front three. And then here we go. Curtis White, look how close it's coming down now. Ian White on an absolute tear here. Uh, earlier, we had talked to him, and he had said that he was looking to put together the last 15 minutes of this race, uh, perhaps in a different way off the front. But in this mind, my mind, it's 10 seconds right now to close this gap up to for Curtis White. I feel for Curtis because I feel... Even if he does get back to the front of this bike race, he has burned a whole box of matches trying to get across and perhaps he will make contact. But as soon as he does, I'm sure it's all going to kick off back again with that leading trio. And I'd have thought he'd be uh, on the back foot once again in this bike race once he gets there. But interesting, I'm sure Strohmeyer, I'm sure Roulier, Bastans have all looked across. They're going to want to uh, keep working and kind of nail on the three podium spots, the big points, the big money for uh, those podium spots. They're not going to want Curtis back in this race. No, they're not. But uh, it is interesting to me because the 624 is that fastest lap that I've seen. And I'm, I'm just wondering where you can take an additional five seconds back. So how on this course can you do a 620? And in my mind, Ian, the only place to really do that is to light it up after double trouble and to just literally pour everything you can, five, six, seven, eight hundred watts into a big move, just turning out power through there because everything else is pretty controlled. You know, you've got these different technical sections. You've got this area. You can only pedal more to take more time back. And I think everybody's fairly tapped at the moment. They've all, that front has raced hard as we see Vandenham riding those stairs. They're unbelievable from Vandenham as he's had such a good ride here sitting in fifth spot right now, just behind Curtis White leading that charge. But I'm just wondering, you know, you're just going to need to pedal. But if these guys sit up on this start finish, I'm expecting that we're going to see a, a, a lap time from Curtis White in the six, 620s, low 620s. Exactly that. I don't think perhaps he needs to go five seconds faster in terms of a lap time. He just needs these guys to look around at, a little bit at each other. Oh, that gap's tantalizingly close. He looks up. Here's that bell. One lap to go for the American champion. Look at the speed he's going. Seriously, kind of visually faster through that section than than the leading trio but I'm sure they're going to do this U-turn through the pits and look across and see that gap and yeah kind of pile more coal on the fire Roulier leading this one he's going to want to play it tactically Strohmeyer needs to be careful he's been pushed back into third position good move from Strohmeyer he's looking to come round Bastans he can't be caught out through one of these technical sections he's ridden a brilliant race to this point so far 
Yeah, we're in the final lap of this uh, USCX series here. We've got three riders at the front. Loris Rouillet, Vincent Bossan, the Belgian, Andrew Strohmeyer coming across five seconds. Outside the front is Curtis White coming across after doing a scorching fast lap. Will he get there for this last one of these last spots on the podium or will he take the win? That's anyone's guess as we go through right now. Coming into the last six, seven minutes of racing at the front, though, will it be a continuation of the Swiss dominance of Loris Rouillet? anyone's guess as they come down now right now Rui on the front as he goes into this this is where we saw things light off before they're coming in to the more technical parts of the course and you can see Rui continuing to just push it and now Strohmeyer going all in trying to get to the front again to take this section where he lit up an attack two laps ago and no, look at the face on Curtis White right now Ian they all know how important this section is, but somehow Strohmeyer has not made up any positions. Roulier controlling the front of this bike race. Bastan's in second. Strohmeyer forced to the back of that trio almost for the first time in this race. And this is a key moment in the race, whether the gap's going to open up through that technical uphill section. Roulier with more than a few bike lengths over. Bastan, Strohmeyer being caught out ever so slightly, I'm sure. Roulier is going to punch it hard out of this section. Yeah, Rie with a big effort there through that. He definitely controlled that, rode the front, knew that he had to neutralize Strohmeyer through there. Strohmeyer found himself in the worst position that he could, but look how deep he's going. Is Strohmeyer going to be able to get around the Belgian? He's trying to. He's trying to get there, lead into this technical section. This is an area where Andrew Strohmeyer's low center of gravity could allow him to take back a little bit of time, but he doesn't want to give too much up to the Swiss rider. He's got a handful of technical sections under pressure right now. The 2020, the 22-year-old, under 23 now, National champion Andrew Strohmeyer needs to put together a career ride right now. Ace these technical sections, have fast feet right off of his bike here. Remount, get back onto the Swiss rider's wheel, nail double trouble, and neutralize an attack after it to be able to take this down to a sprint or distance the Swiss rider. As we see now, the U.S. national champion Curtis White off of his machine. Did such a fast lap time, but just too little, too late to be able to reattach to this group. This is what I was talking about in terms of Curtis White. Even if he has managed to get back on, it looked like those leading trio were all going to kick off and that gap's going out once again. But interesting that Strohmeyer has made it back to the wheel and even Bastan's still in that leading <laughs> trio, just been dangling kind of two or three metres almost off the back. As we see now, big race, big move from Strohmeyer through that section to lead. Off the bike, back on now as Strohmeyer comes through. This is double trouble. He's through one section, forced everybody else off. He'll come into this. Now he's going to come through this section. Now we've got Loris Rouillet there right on his wheel. And now it's going to be up to Strohmeyer. Does anyone have any problems? No. Strohmeyer's through. Rouillet's through. Bastan's is through. Now over the top, it's Strohmeyer that punches out. You can see the body language. He's going 110%, but so is Louis Rouillet. So is Vincent Bastan's as they come through. Now Strohmeyer out of the saddle, looking back. Can he do anything, or are they all at their absolute maximum right now, Ian? I think they're just all on the maximum right now. They're just all desperately going as hard as possible. I think there's going to be a slight lull now up through the pit for the final time. And then they'll be back round to the barriers. Off the back of the barriers, it does drag up to the top of the course and potentially a key part where we'll, they'll fight for position once again. I would have thought they would want to lead on to the start-finish straight. It's a slight headwind from the rider's right-hand shoulder. So I'd have thought they'd be hugging almost the center to the left of the course. All three riders safely over. Small bobble from Rullier over the second barrier. Stromar just opens up a couple of bike lengths. It's going to be a race to the top of the course now to hold position into those steps for the final time. Yeah, for me, the race is to the stairs right now. I think that if you to the stairs first, then you win this race. I think you come around the turn there. Your single file as you come down. It's a headwind. You want it. Strohmeyer now punches it out of the turn. He doesn't want to let it go yet. Rouillet has to let one, two bike lengths go. Bastans up in Rouillet's cassette. Is he going to make a pass on the Swiss rider? No, he's not. Uh, Rouillet shuts that down by going wide, closing that up on Vincent Bastans. But two lengths to the 22-year-old American right now. As they come through here, they're going to swoop down. And it looks to be, is Rouillet going to do a sneaky move and just slot right in right before the stairs or Strohmeyer going to know that this race is to those stairs and that he needs to keep these guys battled back and defend his position as he comes through only one or two more turns for Louis Rouillet and there's one spot if he was able to clip in Ian just on top of the stairs there's a little area to be able to pass but right now it's all coming down to the finish what will happen your guess is as good as mine. I would want to be in that leading position, carry your speed down onto that finishing straight. The actual finishing straight is fairly short. Strohmeyer goes for the ride on the steps. Bastards! Oh! 
Bastans, last year's four-time winner, but Strohmeyer easily not needing to get back in the pedals, carries that, trying to get that momentum and come over the pass, but it's Bastans, like I said, four times winner here, wants to make it five as he comes through here. We get the aerial shot. We're going to pick these guys up right in the U-turn. Ian, what is it going to be? Who would want to lead on to this? It looked like Bastans was still leading. He's Bastans got knows how to finish this one. Gone. Ruye's gone and Funston, excuse me, uh, it's right now, it's Stromai that's coming through, but Bastans knows how to do it. He knows how to finish this one off. This is exactly what we talked about. Vincent Bastans again, five for five. The Belgian beast comes through, taking the victory here in Ross Rochester. Oh my goodness, Loris Ruye, the strongest rider visually on the day, comes up with third spot. He is going to be scratching his head and asking, how in the world did this happen today? Whoo, man, it was Curtis White that came through with such a fast finish. What a great ride from Michael Vandenham. And then we see, I believe, that behind that is going to be uh, a great ride there from Jules Van Kempen. And just behind him is going to be Lance Hydette. But Ian, what a finish there. And what a move under pressure from Andrew Strohmeyer trying to ride the steps, taking everybody off uh, off guard. That is ridiculous. Vincent Bastans had no right to win that bike race as we see more and more riders coming in. Lance Haydet brings it ahead of Scott Funston. But yeah, as I was saying, Vincent Bastan, no right, <laughs> no right to win that bike race. But as we said in commentary, the two categories of riders, they're all strong, but just some know how to win bike races. And Vincent Bastans is an absolute bandit, just absolutely robbed them <laughs> right at the end of that one just ran full gas up the steps well Strohmeyer just kind of compromised the speed on the actual steps by riding them and his idea was to carry the speed by being on the bike off the top of the steps and lead it all the way to the finish but he kind of underestimated <laughs> the fact that Bastans was going to sneak up the inside and fast feet all the way up those steps jump on and then kind of he had the racing line he could block around that right hander after the steps and then yeah all Belgians can sprint and uh, Vincent Bastan showed that today. Dude, great race. Awesome race. Yeah, one of the best races. Uh, yeah, I've seen at one of these US CX Cups, and there's been some great racing over the years. We see uh, Caleb Schwartz coming in. Just yeah, over an hour of racing for him. Yeah, yeah, it was great to see. Uh, I think uh, you know we're getting some of the ambience from the uh, from the course. So apologies if your speakers are quite loud there, but uh, a really beautiful, uh, beautiful final there. I get my hats off to Andrew Strohmeyer, man. He to jump. You know what it's like to to execute. That's like if the barriers are just in front of the finish line, as we see uh, Ben Frederick there sprinting it out for uh, to to finish this one off there. Uh, that was a serious effort coming in. As he uh, as he finished this one off, but um, yeah, ra sprinting there looked to be against Adam Moat. So serious serious race there. But uh, wow, we we to be able to finish that, to be able to execute something that technical under so much pressure. As we get the replay now, Ian coming in, he leads this one out. Everyone thinks he's getting up. No, he's not. He sets up. Boom. Boom, boom, small, one, two pedal strokes. Then loses a little momentum. They have to run around him. Just, I have to take my hat off to Stromeyer. He rolled the dice. He tried to win the bike race by doing something different. He knew that if he could carry the speed over the top of those steps and maintain that lead, he would have been able to punch it over the top of there by remaining on the bike. And I'm sure he would have won the bike race, but as I say, uh, Bastans just knows how to win bike races. He knew at that moment exactly what he had to do. Rudier tried to go up the right-hand side, and Bastans took full advantage, forcing his way through on the left-hand side of the track. And, uh, yeah, like we said, you just wanted to lead into that very, very fast downhill finish and a very short finishing straight to be able to come round anyone. But absolutely perfect <laughs> race from Bastans dangling the, the entire bandit. race. I'm never going to forget that. That was a great <laughs> one. I, um, I agree with you, man. He he played, I just said it in the commentary, he waited, he played his hand perfect. He, he, like I said, if you're looking back and you see everything and you look at the stats and you look at the history, you're like, all right, we got the guy that's won the year four times. He's raced here a heck of a lot more times. 
uh, four times. He's won here more than four times, but he's he's literally um, he's won this race more than four times. But he's won the last now five editions, so five in a row. But um, I have to ask this, and I, I have to say personally, I, my hat goes off to Stromae. I thought that was such a cool move to be able to do that in the final. Something that I personally would have uh, also tried to do myself and would have taken that gamble. I have to ask you, Ian, do you think he would have won or had a better chance at winning if he had just ran it? I have to probably say yes. Um, I do too. There's no way he would have lost the leading position if he had run it. I agree. But, yeah, then you're rolling the dice and wondering whether someone can come around you in the finale. Maybe he wasn't super, super confident about his, his actual sprint towards the end. And perhaps, yeah, just felt more confident by remaining on the bike, trying to uh, win that one as we get a replay. The gap's already gone. This was the problem. Downhill onto that finishing straight. The gap was already there. And you're not going to make up that on uh, a ride no. like Vincent Bastan's. No, and you can see there, it's on P-Stone Gravel, and it's just all sideways when you're trying to put the power down, but you can see that Boston's is ecstatic, and we're going to hear from them all right now. So uh, we're down to our man Bill, who's with Vincent Boston's. We are here at the finish line, Rochester Cross, with our day one winner, Vincent Baston. Vincent, it looked like everybody was writing you off. You were just uh, hanging on to that group for dear life. What is it about this place, and how did you how did you make it happen for the win? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. It's, it was very difficult for me also last weekend because uh, I crashed really hard before the race. So uh, and this is my last year in the US, so for me it's really hard. <laughs> It's okay. I mean, it's 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 a huge for us to see you here. You know, you me meant a lot to this this cross scene. So for you to come back to fight two guys that looked like they were stronger all race, can you just at least walk me through that last quarter of a lap and where you were able to get the lead and take it in for the win? Yeah, it's it's very difficult. Uh, those family, the hosting family on a stronger stay. It's already five years, I think, and it just gives me strength to win today. So I. Uh, yeah. I'm really, uh, uh, I, I went two times to the chiropractor this week to the physiotherapist, but it's, yeah, it's, it's just amazing that I can win today. Well, amazing effort. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you out here tomorrow again. Thank you. All right, we're going to go to our second place finisher, Andrew Strohmeyer. Come on this side, Andrew. Animating the race. All day long. I mean, that that you've you've been very very vocal about it. That that's your plan. You want to make people race. Looks like you did it again. You know, talk me through at least. You know, it looked like you and Loris maybe uh, going back and forth on on what should happen at the front of the race and just just how at least most of it happened. And then when Bastions came back in. Yeah, it was an interesting race. I wanted to sit in a little more than I did last week. I I did a lot of work last week, and I think it played to my advantage. But I wanted to see what I could do, sitting back a little more. So for the first. Yeah, like the good part of the race, I sat in and just yeah rode with those guys, made sure I rode clean lines. And then with three to go, I tried something. Um, I tried to really push through a couple sections, and I got a gap, but they brought it back. And then yeah, it, then it then it got then we went to do using tactics, and it got really interesting. No one wanted to pedal, no one wanted to ride, and yeah, it was just during the race I had to think really hard about what I wanted to do so third in Rochester day one sec I mean third in Roanoke day one second in Rochester day one what's what, what's the magic plan for tomorrow <laughs> hopefully I can keep that trend going and we get one more but yeah I just really feel it out and just see what's happening it's it's tough racing these guys they're all so strong and on such a high level that yeah you really have to think well it's great to see you up there congratulations we'll see you out here tomorrow yeah thank you all right, finally, we're going to have our third place finisher, Loris. How are you doing? Yeah, all day today. So uh, talk to me about this. Like you and Strohmeyer up there at the, at the front looked like you had control of this race, and then you let Vincent back in. Or, or did you not? Did he just work his way up there? How, how did it play out? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's a nice race. Yeah, for sure, I am third today. I have not uh, not win, but uh, yeah, I am happy with my race. I have uh, I have tried my best today, and uh, Stromayer and Vincent. It's uh, maybe 
better in the last part of me and yeah, I have pushed my maximal so I am happy with this. Anything different tomorrow as far as strategy goes? Yeah, tomorrow I want to try for a win. <laughs> but uh, now I, I know uh, what is uh, important is the next part of the race for a win maybe. So yeah, today uh, Vincent, it's I think uh, the good strategy and it uh, run very stronger, very fast. I cannot run uh, more fast today. So yeah, but yeah, tomorrow I try for better. Well, congratulations. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right, and that'll do it for us here on the ground in Rochester. We're going to send it back to our commentating team. Well, thank you very much, Bill. Ian, man, some really great as we go through these highlights. Uh, it was a great race, but any final thoughts after those interviews? I think it just, for me, shows how much it means to a rider like Vincent Bastans to come to the U.S. and, and win these sorts of races. It was very tactical affair towards the end there and like we said we just he just knows how to win a bike race and it sounds like uh andrew stromeyer is just kind of just trying to work it out trying to work out how to win these bike races how to beat these guys because i have no doubt he's got the legs he's got the ability and it's just working out the tactics working out kind of where to where to apply the pressure and when to really go all in um so yeah it'd be interesting to see how they take that information on board and how it plays out tomorrow over the approximately the same course some sections run backwards um, as such so uh, yeah what a huge battle we saw today and yeah three three great champions on our podium yeah that last lap 617 so scorching fast almost 20 seconds faster than any lap preceding it Bastons did it so emotional at the finish five in a row for the belgian it's great to see a good rider a good dude and a good friend here it is vincent boston's andrew strohmeyer and loris ruya finishing out the top three curtis white got so close uh, as he made that big attack vandenham yules van kempen Lutz heidet and scott funston round out the top eight down in ninth Ian Ackert, Marcus Shelton, Luke Valenti, Matteo Opizi, Caleb Schwartz in 13th, Dylan, I'm not in, Dylan Z is there in 15th, Ben Frederick from the Small Monsters Project in 17th, Adam Moat there from Colorado Mesa University, Casey Hildebrand in 19th, Owen Brenneman in 20th, Cody Kaiser 